If you're a business owner and you're using Google Maps, you'll know that being found by customers needing your service or business is an essential way to get profits. But the trouble is, so many other businesses in your area have seen the value and realized the importance of claiming their Google business profile. So if your business is just like all the other businesses when it's listed, then it's not gonna stand out. In fact, no one's going to notice it if it's the same as all the others. So this video is gonna help you stand out to see how you can be found, to set you apart from all the other businesses in your locality and in your category. And these tips in this video will show you how I get businesses to stand out so they get clicks. And as you may already know, once you get clicks on your business on Google Maps, that signals to Google that you're considered an important business and that will help you rank as you get more and more clicks. And that extra traffic will obviously then bring in new customers for your business. But there is just one thing you need to know before we go into these tips. And it's worth noting that there are some things that you just can't control. For example, you can't control how close someone is to your business when they're searching for your type of business. In fact, as a user, I found the other day when I was in Budapest, I was searching for a nearby restaurant and I wanted it to be affordable, I wanted it to have a great rating. I'm sure you can relate to that as your customers will too if you own a restaurant. But you notice there are some things that the restaurant can't do anything about and there are some things it can do something about. So for example, the price, well, whether it's expensive or inexpensive may just be down to the type of restaurant it is. A uh, fine cuisine is very different to a burger restaurant. And ultimately that is decided by users that visit. So you have no control over that. As mentioned earlier, there's nothing you can do about distance. That literally is how close is your restaurant to the person searching for it. So there's always going to be a benefit in being in an upbuilt area where people are going to be searching for your type of business. And so that's how I selected my restaurant that I went to. But of course, this doesn't just apply to restaurants. This applies to all businesses as I'm about to show you. So as I now jump onto Google Maps and take some random cities and some random businesses, think about your business, think about your city, and then try and apply these principles to your particular listing in Google Maps. And feel free in the comments below to put your business and to put where it's located so that I can have a look and maybe I can give you some tips as well in the comments below. So for my first one, I've gone for lawyers in Adelaide. What is someone going to want with a lawyer? They're going to want trust. So I think ratings is important. So some have got 61, some have got 110. I'm looking at the number of ratings. The 5.0, of course, is great as well. 4.8 is fine. Now here's a little tip. If you get below 4.5, then you're going to struggle. So you notice all these are doing well, they're all above 4.7. And probably if I was selecting one, you're going to go for one that's got more. So 21 votes at 5.0, might not be as good as 136 people with a 4.9 average. But why is it so important to get a rating above 4.5? Well, it's down to really ratings on anything at all. Any rating, you can then filter. So if I wanted anything above two stars, and you notice it is two and above. So it's not saying two stars only, it's two stars and plus. So say you had a 4.4, then you wouldn't appear on the 4.5 one. So 4.4 won't appear, it'll only be above 4.5. And so that's the reason. So you can appear in all of these if you've got above 4.5. Gradually, if you get to four or threes, you get filtered out. So that's something that I'd recommend get ratings, get regular ratings, and make sure you've got many of them, particularly on areas where trust is important. So of course, ratings apply to all sorts of businesses and are always going to be beneficial to your business. But another thing is think in terms of keywords as well. So if I was searching for a cab service in Mumbai, then this is what comes up and that's fine. And of course, ratings are very much part of it. Let me show you the importance of keywords. What do I want? If I want a cab service, I want someone to pick me up or a taxi service, I probably want reliability. So what about if I put in a reliable cab service? So now I'm looking for reliability. And you'll notice that it now picks up on the word reliable as well. So this person gets rated, I think reliable car care deliver is what they said. Uh, again, uh, the word reliable is emboldened here. Um, reached on time and reliable. Uh, serving on time and very reliable and timely response. Um, so these are all reviews, 
but you notice the reviews include keywords like reliability and timely. So just think in terms of your business, what keywords would you need to put in there that are likely to be used when someone's searching for them? And so reliability, of course, would make sense for a taxi service, but if your business, there may be a keyword that you can use as well. Google's very intelligent. It'll pick it up from your website. It'll pick it up from reviews and it'll pick it up from other authorities as well about your business. And sometimes to understand what keywords it is that you need to use, go to insights and in insights, it will show you the keywords where people have found your business. And you might find some of those descriptive words there. So rather than copying what others are doing and being like everyone else, stand out, use those keywords and you'll see more traffic. Now, the next tip is going to make a world of difference because it's visual and it has an impact on whether people will click. And it's surprising how these little thumbnails that are produced in Google Maps will make a massive difference to your click through rate. So Google gives some guidelines as to what's needed for photos. And you can notice here, for example, if I go for some of the tips that Google gives, uh, they're very clear that they want exterior photos, interior photos, product photos, photos at work, fo food and drink photos, common areas, rooms, team photos. And in each case, in their guidelines, they generally say three, at least three great photos. Now, if you look at other people's photos, often they're just snaps. Maybe they're just grabbed from the internet. Google knows that. In fact, Google knows exactly what the photo is about. What type of photo would appeal to your customers? And if you're not too sure, then here's another tip. So I'm going to look at an opticians. If I type in opticians in Google search for the images, you notice what comes up. This is what Google considers is the most ideal photo for opticians. So here we've got the reading glasses and the eye test, but you notice a lot's about the glasses themselves, not the shop front. And that would be one of my recommendations is get photos like these and get them so that they're showing as one of the top photos on your Google business profile. So let me just give you an example. So I've gone to the UK here in Nottingham. I've done a search for opticians and this is what's coming up. And some are just shop fronts and street views. It's not really that appealing. If I'm looking for glasses or spectacles or an opticians, maybe a shop front works, but it could just be a case of looking for glasses and products. So this here, John Opticians, I don't know who they are, but that's a great photo because I can see glasses there, the spectacles, and just going on to his website, you notice here he's got a shop front, but it isn't anything to do with the cover photo. So where does that photo actually come from? Well, if you go into his photos themselves, uh, there's his first uh, photo, but then he's got these products all the way through, glasses, glasses. And Google's picked up and Google actually intelligently chooses which photo it thinks is most appropriate. And that would help him stand out. And that's one of the reasons why he's probably getting plenty of ratings on Google, because he's standing out and he's got uh, a relatively good rating because of this. On a previous video, we saw how Google's so intelligent that this artificial intelligence knows exactly what's in the image. It can read the text. It can even tell what type of expression is on the face of the person. So you don't need to be descriptive any longer with your photos because Google knows exactly what the photos are. And 99 times out of 100, it gets it spot on. It's just bear in mind that looking on a laptop or a tablet is a very different experience for those that are using a mobile. And the majority of people use Google Maps on mobiles when they're out and about. Let me just show you why it makes such a difference. So if I was looking for jewelers in New York on a laptop, jewelry comes up, some good contrast there. But if I was to look for these on a phone. So then the map comes up for go to view list. Look at this. Look how many more photos come up. And some of these product photos really stand out. They've got the good contrast and there's plenty of them as well. So what I would say is, is uploading good photographs, particularly for mobiles, will get you a chance to be picked on. In fact, the product photos like this are really well taken. They stand out. You notice here plenty of photos. Whereas on this one here, there was nothing at all. And so again, this won't get clicked on as much because it doesn't really offer any information other than a shop front. Now taking the next one, I'm going to do a search in Kansas and look for a personal gym, a personal gym trainer. So as I go down here and go through these, you'll just notice that this one stands out. Why? See schedule and book. It's the only one that's got a button. So people will be immediately know what to do if they're after that 
and they can click through to it and it takes them then through to price and so on. So is that something you can do? And again, you can often find how they've done it. You can see what they've used, wellness and living. So it's in partnership with them. So you can do a search for that if you see someone using a button in your particular business. But how outstanding that is and so simple. Now, sometimes you just got to think about your customers as well. And what is it that they're going to be looking for? So for instance, with a flower shop, they want delivery of the flowers. They may not want to go and pick them up. These are all known as attributes. And depending on your business, you may get several different types of attributes. So I'm in Quebec, I've done a search here for flower shops. I've particularly wanted delivery. And you notice here, in-store shopping, in-store pickup, delivery. And these are attributes that they've committed in their Google business profile. And again, if you notice curbside delivery, in-store shopping delivery. So the reason why these ones are in the top 20 is because they offer delivery. And also this person's got someone to say about the flower delivery was good, a good option. Just think in terms of your business. Is there some attribute that you could use that would help people to look for your business because it's standing out as being an extra service for your customer. And of course, with Google Business Profile, you might want to add your Q and A's, your questions and answers and answer them. You want to reply to all of the people that give you reviews as well. So if a customer has a question, you want to respond to that as best as you can. Just be known for giving a great service and people will click and they will tell you about it and that will get more clicks. You get this snowball effect that keeps rolling. As you get more clicks, you rank higher, you get more clicks, you get your more customers, you get your profits increase. You're standing out because you're doing it different to 90% of the businesses out there that don't think this way. But you know, one of the biggest things I get through my customers, people contacting me, is they say they can't understand why is it they're the best service or the best business in their area, and yet Google doesn't rank them very highly. Now we've seen about the importance of standing out, but there's also an importance of understanding why it is that Google isn't ranking your business. So if you want to know the five areas that I can guarantee you'll need to improve on, then head over to this video and you'll be able to see exactly what you can do today to improve your chances of ranking your business.